Hello, my name is Chip Thompson and this is the Ultimate Survival Challenge in FIFA 20 where we take newly promoted club Norwich City and attempt to keep them in the Premier League despite being really shy to the game. This is episode 2 and today we'll be playing Chelsea, West Ham and Manchester City. Yeah, nice easy run of fixtures there. First off, it's Chelsea where we'll be bringing back all the players we stole from them in the summer. Much like the Liverpool team we played in episode 1, uh, Chelsea named a bunch of reserve players and it turns out this is some sort of weird career mode glitch at the moment. Um, and as of recording this, it's two days before the official release of FIFA 20 before it drops uh, properly, not just on EA Access. And I really hope they get this fixed because this is not good. So we kick off then against this Chelsea reserve side and it's just, it's a shame actually that this glitch exists and is a thing right now. It just, it kind of defeats the purpose of this whole ultimate survival challenge thing. Like the idea was I was not playing world class, which is a level up on what I played last year and tried to keep this lower rank side up. But if teams are just going to play their weakened sides, then this is going to make the whole thing a lot easier. This whole series is pointless. Welcome, hope you're enjoying. So it's Chelsea with the first chance though, as we fail to get a ball away, losing possession outside the box, and it's Chelsea that cross the ball in. Luckily the header from Abrahams is straight at the keeper. Side note, I almost signed Tammy Abrahams in the summer, but I figured if I was going to do that I might as well just play as Chelsea, considering how many players I stole from them. Our first opportunity comes as Puki lays the ball off to Mount, who shoots not too far wide. And only now does it occur to me that we have Mount on loan from Chelsea, so surely he shouldn't be able to play against his parent club. Thanks EA. That Mount and Puki combination almost works again, only in reverse this time, as Puki's shot is pushed past the post. We threaten Chelsea again as Puki is dispossessed on the edge of the area, only for one deer to think fuck it and try his luck, and it's not too far over. Oh hey, we haven't seen Mount and Puki combine in a little while, so here's Mount flicking a lovely ball over the top to Puki, and he just can't get any meaningful contact on the ball, and it's a fairly simple save for the Chelsea's under-14s goalkeeper. Half time and we've been all over the kids. Wait, that, that didn't sound right. An exciting two shots on target all of the first half. Wow. Time for the second half. Let's see if we can beat these children worse than a Catholic priest. It's past Billy Gilmore's bedtime and he's replaced with grown up Ross Barkley. Chelsea have their best chance so far as Abrahams lays it off to Kante and he stings the hands of our goalkeeper. You can tell me if this is getting a bit boring, but it's Mount Tapuki, but his shot is so tame even a baby could have saved it. Oh, one did. Being upset that he's missed his nap time, the Chelsea goalkeeper has a tantrum and nearly gifts us a goal. Yeah, yeah, it's Mount Tapuki again, shut up. Although, fair play to Blackman in the Chelsea goal. He was only shot out of his mother's vagina a few months back, but he's able to keep this effort out. With time running out, we decide to switch up our attacking play and allow Buendia to pass through for Mount, who scores in the 90th minute against his parent club, who he really shouldn't be playing against. Yay. Before Chelsea can remember the terms of Mount's loan deal, we sub him for a CDM to see the game out. And that's it! While we didn't absolutely smash the kids today, we still pick up three points. Eh, Pedophilia jokes aside, it is a damn shame about this bloody bug. It's really affecting this whole survival challenge thing. Hopefully we get a patch soon. You can see from the stats alone how bad this is. We should not be dominating a game against Chelsea like this. Next up, we play West Ham, and I'm a tad conflicted being a West Ham fan and all. Yeah, yeah, I know, but hey, better than being a Man United sport at the moment, right? Kick off then from the London Stadium, here we go. Pookie picks up the ball deep and sends a wonderful pass over to Loftus-Cheek, who takes it first time and scores! Except that he doesn't, it's chalked off for offside. And after much yelling at the TV screen and fake linesman, I see, mm, yeah, it was probably the right call. Mount is feeling bloody ambitious and has a go from long range, and I'm fairly certain I just pushed the wrong button here. West Ham had their first chance as Fredericks moves down the right hand side and pulls it back only for Declan Rice to stumble it past the far post. Puki sends Bondia through on goal, he's only got the keeper to beat and he pulls the shot wide. Really poor effort and yes I'm blaming the player, not my terrible FIFA ability. We come forward again with Bonida playing the ball into Mount, it was tripped in the box and we get a penalty! Up steps Puki to take it <laughs> and it's straight at the keeper. Our second penalty miss of the season, and I promise I didn't do that on purpose just so we don't beat my beloved West Ham. And it's 0-0 at half time. The stats show we've been the better team so far in this game. And I do believe it's time for the second half. The first action of the second half sees a jetty play the ball over our defence. Our keeper comes rushing out, but it's tucked through his legs, and we go 1-0 down. I always, 
always bring the keeper out in those situations and it never bloody works. It's the panic, it just sets in and I just hold triangle. But I promise, I haven't done this just to let my beloved West Ham score and take the lead on purpose. 1-0. I especially love the way our keeper spreads his legs like a cheap prostitute here, just to make it a little bit easier for them to score. We attempt our favourite attacking manoeuvre, Mount Dapuki, but it's turned past the post by Fabianski. Loftus-Cheek plays the ball to Mount, who takes one touch and has a go for the top corner, but it sails well over. And I would make a claim for a penalty after this challenge, but I really don't want to be taking another one. Roberts puts it into the path of Puki, but Fabianski denies him again. Do you ever get that feeling it's not going to be your day? I promise I'm not missing all these intentionally just to help out my beloved West Ham. There's not long to go now, and West Ham break down the right-hand side, put in a cross, and Haller gets there before all of our defenders, and makes it 2-0 to my beloved West Ham, who I'm totally not losing to on purpose, I promise. And that's it, the full-time whistle, beloved West Ham jokes aside, I'm quite annoyed we lost this one, considering we actually played pretty well and made chances. Still, it's our first defeat of the survival challenge, so I guess I can't complain too much. And no allegations of match-fixing need to be investigated at all. According to the stats, West Ham scored two goals with just one shot on target. Okay, time for our final game of this episode, and it's going to be at home to Manchester City. I would have been a bit worried about this game ahead of time, but it's because of this bug, and I'm assuming City are going to play their reserves again, so I think we've got a decent chance of repeating what Norwich did to City in real life. Ugh, yep, it's Kids United FC again. Kick off then for Game 5 of this Ultimate Survival Challenge, where we attempt to survive against teams of small children. Of course, if we end up losing this now, I'm going to look a right dickhead. Well, I mean, I mean, more of one, I guess. Mason Mount runs into the city box and is hauled down with the most blatant foul and I think I've ever seen. And we get a penalty! Oh, fuck, we've got to take a penalty. Well, third time is a charm, right? Nope. No, it isn't. <laughs> I really don't like this new penalty system. We get another chance as the ball falls to Hernandez in the box who swivels and tries to send one across the goal, but it's wide. We go close again with Puki touching it off to Loftus-Cheek who shoots straight at Bravo, but we are on top of this game so far. But it does remain nil-nil until the half-time break. A little looky-loo at the stats and we have been the better team. Mind you, we said that in the last game against West Ham as well. Second half begins. Puki gets played through and moves into the city box. Oh god, please don't get fouled. He cuts it back to Mount who is completely unmarked and he scores! We are 1-0 up against City and that scoreline is really not as impressive as it sounds because they are playing their reserves. That's screw it, we're going to celebrate anyway. City have a free kick 32 yards out and at this point I was fairly comfortable it was going well over but to be fair they do force a save out of the goalkeeper. City come forward and Zimmerman rushes out for some reason, leaving Mahrez completely alone and he equalises. Ah oh, dang, the one senior player on the pitch has scored for City and I may end up eating my words. We try and restore our lead when Mount passes to Loftus-Cheek who breaks away from the City defence but can't score and we have to settle for a corner, which I'm really bad at, I never score from corners, you're never going to see a goal from a corner in this save. City decide they're actually going to go try and win this game by bringing on real players Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling. And they make an immediate impact with Sterling picking up the ball and he's given so much free time to get his shot away, but it's a good save from the keeper, keeps things level, but I'm getting increasingly anxious about this result now. It's a shot from outside the box for City, but it is a comfortable save. <laughs> is it full time yet? Just when it looks like City might Watford us, we go down the other end with Puki, playing the ball through to his best friend Mount, who has loads of time, oh, but he can't pick his spot. What a chance. Here comes City again, crossing the ball in from the left. De Bruyne heads it down, yeah, he's on now too, and Sterling gets a toe to the ball, but that's not going to trouble the goalkeeper. We're into stoppage time now. Mares lays the ball on for Jesus, who forces another save from the keeper. Oh my, this is squeaky bum time. Just to add to the tension from the resulting corner, our keeper comes to claim it, but completely misses it. Luckily, we managed to get the ball clear. Oof, that really could have gone anywhere. But that is the end of the game. We hang on for a point in the end after mocking their kids at the start like some sort of anti-climate protester with Greta Thunberg. They did bring out their big guns in the end and it made all the difference. I'm going to take a point there. Looking at the stats though, it was pretty even in the end. I think Man City had the better of the chances, but we didn't play too badly at all. Alright, before the end of the episode, let's just have a quick look at the league table. After five games, we're fourth in the Premier League with two wins, two draws and that defeat against West Ham. And because this is some sort of stick parallel universe, Sheffield United are top. Well, that's going to do it for another episode. Thank you so much for watching. Um, 
I'm really sorry if this whole glitch thing is affecting your enjoyment of uh, career mode and especially this supposed over, uh, ultimate survival challenge. If they do patch it and it doesn't transfer over to saves, I don't know whether to start again, do something different or carry it on. I think we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, but if you're enjoying the series so far, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time where hopefully things will look more like a Premier League fixture and less like a nursery school.